thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I must say, I have been to Dublin before. I absolutely love it. So I've worked quite a bit with RTE uh, and TV3. Um, but it's good to meet some new people. I'm going to talk to you. I don't know if you guys know me or have read a little bit about me. But I've been in development now for nearly 20 years. And I'm going to share with you what I call my three Ps. Uh, which are some strategies when you're actually thinking about leading change, whether that be coming up with the new ideas or new ways of storytelling or new formats or completely new products and thoughts. Um, I'm hoping that what I'm going to go through is it, going to pull together some of the threads because there are definitely some, some kind of key thoughts that have been uh, um, discussed today. Okay, so um, we start, as you can see from my slides, in the ocean. And we're there because my big break in development uh, was Blue Planet. So you, now you do know how odd I am, because this is now Blue Planet 2. Uh, and I basically helped to come up with the idea for Blue Planet 1. And it was through literally mapping demographics against what animals people liked. I'm a mathematician by background. I love maths. And uh, I was working in strategy, and they said, could you just do, you know, help us with natural history programs? They're not doing very well. As you can imagine, for the BBC, that was a bit of a problem, because, you know, if, if natural history programs don't do well, then we're in big trouble. And I did this piece of maths, and I discovered that women like underwater animals. Don't you? Yeah? I get, I'm getting nods. Um, dolphins, starfish seahorses. Um, and it was actually very useful because natural history programs, animal programs, skew male. So by basing a whole series on underwater animals, we brought in the women. So I was very young. Uh, I got a great big pat on the back. Um, and I was a little bit arrogant, to be honest with you, at the time. Uh, and I'm going to take you now to a sad story. That was a success story, but I like it when people share the, the failures, don't you? And my first P is patterns. So these are things to consider when you're leading change. So patterns. What is the change you want? Now, I didn't know that I was in a pattern. I thought male skewed program bring in the women, yeah? So I, my next big job was, can you please refresh Top Gear? It wasn't doing so well. Do you want to see what I did? Yeah, I brought in the women, or I thought I would. This is what happened. <laughs> Okay, enough of that. Right, so audiences felt under three million. Uh, one guy got done for drink driving, had nothing to do with me, and Jeremy Clarkson left for the first time. That was before the hangry thing that happened. Okay, so that was, that was a, a bad pattern. And one of the things I often say about, about creativity, so this is my favorite definition, is your ability to modify self-imposed constraints. You've all got patterns. The higher up you are, when I get taken into a team, and they say, this is what we want to do. We want to all go digital. We want to all go visual content. We all want to do this. You're predetermining what is the change you want. And I can promise you it's based on patterns that you've got. Because the higher up you go, you're, you're given your job based on what you, th what they, you knowing what works and what doesn't work. That's why you get to the position you are. So my first job is often to think about what patterns people have and to think about, do we need to change them? Sometimes you don't. Sometimes they're good. So they're the internal patterns, which are the ones that I had. So what do you always do and what else could you do? So just thinking very carefully about that. You know, sense checking before project. Am I always doing this, this the same sort of way? But today I wanted to talk a little bit about external patterns. We've heard them today. We've heard, you know, looking for the new. But you can hear that a lot of the stuff... Now, bear in mind, I've left television and I left uh, radio and online, and I've moved into a whole different world of product development uh, with Google and the people that we've been talking about today. That it, for them, it's beyond just looking for tweaks and new content. It's beyond looking for new markets and audiences. It's about spotting totally new need 
and looking for new products and services. I wasn't in that world. I've only got into that world in the last four years. So it requires a completely different type of thinking. Um, so we're, I think we're very good at new content, actually. New forms of storytelling, new formats. We're good at looking for new markets. I work now, I have to work with, you know, to, to talk to people in China, look at new kind of products, selling products to BT and various telecoms market. But the products and services is something I think we tend not to be, not to like so much. Um, this is a quote by a guy called Scott Galloway. Do you know him? Have you heard of him? He said, and it really annoyed me, actually, uh, he said, for the 21st century, TV, and by that he is referring to traditional media, are remarkably dumb. It was a throwaway comment, but it's he, his book and his talks are all about the big four. So Facebook, Google, Apple, and Amazon. What he's referring to there is data because we've given a lot of our data away, and we're not really that into data, we're more into storytelling. I am too. I mean, I like maths, as I've, I've, I've mentioned, but I don't think we are dumb at all. We're bloody good at new content. We're bloody good at reaching new audiences in new ways. It's just about thinking slightly differently. So I'm going to show you some things. My, radio is not my area, but I have really enjoyed looking at some of the new stuff that's happening in this area. So um, we've got a massive, do you know this, this group, BTS? Has anyone heard of them? They're sweeping the awards in America, so a few nods. K-pop, uh, I live in Little Korea in England, so I know them very well. Um, and they are basically, they're, they're real, their name translates to Bulletproof Boy Scouts. They are amazing. So there's a whole new, big, big patterns and market changes, just looking outside of our countries in terms of what's going on and keeping an eye on that. So that's one big pattern change to look out for. The other one is that AI will be able to automatically visualize audio. So you won't have to put together clips and things. It will be done automatically. That's not far off. Has anyone seen that, the Panasonic car? No, has anyone seen it? So basically, <laughs> because of the fact that you'll have self-driving cars, which isn't far off, lorries are already going that way now, so it, that's, it's very close, because my husband's in that industry, that's why I know. Um, you can actually watch video content whilst you're in the car, listening to your radio, on the screens, any glass. So that's going to really change things. I mean, this is far off, but it's not that far off. That's already, that technology already exists. Panasonic have done it. The other changes, the big patterns going on, and we've talked about this stuff today, it's not just AI, it's also micro-fandom. So I will be able to, this already exists, this is a crowdfunded channel called History Hit TV. They're going to do a science one next. I know because I know the entrepreneur that's working on it. You can, you can decide, I want to know just about pottery in the 17th century or the 18th century, and you can just select that. So people will be able to select very minutia of information that they're interested in, and that will affect all of us. All of us. And the last one the guys have talked about, Alexa. Did you know that Alexa's recording in your house all the time? You have to switch it off. So that was a bit of a surprise to me. I don't have Alexa for that reason. I don't want her to hear what goes on in a mad Italian family. Uh, <laughs> so, but that has an effect in terms of how people ask for things, how are they going to ask for your radio station, for your content, for your presenters? Because they'll be able to ask in terms of micro-information at that level. So it has all sorts of... And I don't know the answers, but I thought I would share. I think they're quite interesting, aren't they, those things, if you think about it. That's what's going on out there. This is happening. It's not like I'm not being crazy. This is actually happening now. So... I've put us in a bit of a bubble, because I think we are. 
I think we're very good at what we do, excellent at it, but we talk about the same things, the same patterns, over and over again. I've heard similar things said today over and over again. My challenge is, can we start thinking beyond that, beyond, pro beyond content, beyond looking for audiences, really understanding where's new value, because that's where you make money. I have literally helped a program maker that makes food programs, that has a website, that has a rep recipes, and a publishing um, magazine. They have magazines, I can't say who they are. Um, to come up with an app, that will make them around about 10 mil, if it, if it all goes according to plan, because various food companies will ask to have their products on it. So it's, you know, there's a whole world of new stuff out there that can be made. It's just a matter of breaking those patterns or being more deliberate. So I thought I'd share with you what I call the fangs. Do you like that? So these are the fangs. So uh, Facebook, so in terms of breaking patterns, Facebook was about friends, uh, you know, a, um, Amazon was more about books, so they, they were all doing other things. Now we know that half, un, just under half of the UK audience use Facebook for news. In eight years, more households will have Amazon Prime than they'll have cable television. Netflix re will release more films this year than major film studios combined. Google has really turned into a cloud company. That's what they are now. That's their business. That's how they're making their money. And Sky, well, we know it's not just about what it used to be, but it's completely moved into a whole different area. So they break their patterns. They don't just think about doing what they do inside their bubble. They're constantly looking for new value, new things that they can make. The key thing for us, and this really shone through today, was you don't want to break all your patterns. There are things that we do that no one else can, and they're paying high price to have our people that can do it. You have to think about what is hard to copy. What pattern do you protect and do you look after that no one else can copy? This lot, have things like Facebook have a cable on the Atlantic floor, um, Amazon basically are buying vertically, so they're buying the whole production line so they can own it and keep it the cost down. You know, I don't have to go through all of that, but you can see that they're protecting themselves, they're protecting the patterns, and others they're breaking, they're being very clever. So when Scott Galloway said, we are dumb, it really annoyed me, because we're not. It's just that we're not, we're very good at what we do, and we've been doing it for a long time. You know, it's hard to break out of that, and I'll talk a little bit about that when I go to my next part. So what do I think that we have? Again, I, I not, radio isn't my thing, but maybe it's nice to have a perspective of someone who's not within it. I think what you have is, number one, the big four aren't looking at you right now. They are looking at visual content, but they're not looking at you. have time. You could capitalize on it. You could. That's the first thing. The second thing I think you guys have got is that the Apple podcast analytics have shown that, on average, people listen to 90% of a podcast. Why do you think that, you know, Alexa, they're, doing, they're looking for Alexa and all those home devices? Because the market online is very hard to make people loyal. People are fickle online. They flick from, they don't care where that content comes from. But you guys have incredible loyalty. So that is something to think about. I don't know how you use it, but that's something. And the last thing I think that we all need to think about is our skilled creative talent. The US is buying, I don't know what it's like here, but in, in the UK, a lot of friends that left the BBC at the same time as me have been snapped up and gone to the US. Now, I don't want to move, but the offer's there. So the top talent is going. You need to protect that pattern, your talent. Because if, you, if they go, we're stuffed. We really are. Because that's our key pattern that's hard to copy. Right, 
so, overall, I'd say for patterns, deliberately break them. Be deliberate. Know your patterns and break them. Okay, my next bubble is people. So it's another P. So, in terms of people, obviously, to, um, if you want change to happen, so you've come up with an idea and it needs to be made, who's going to make it? The people that work for you. The people that you frequent, your partners, whoever it might be. Um, but also, it's external, because actually, in our world, you know, it's a connected world. The digital world is a connected world, so it's all about external people as well. So I'm going to focus on them first. So in terms of external people, the two key things I always ask is, um, who do you want to follow you? Who do you want, me, who do you want to buy? It's, it's your target audience. Who do you, and it might not be just the people that you're... The reason I say, who do you want to follow you, it might not be the people you're just targeting. It might be that you want to look at influencers. You might want to target in a slightly different way. And the second question I often ask is, what do they value? To find the new that is not just content, you have to look for what do people really, really value? What matters to them? What's important to them? Now, obviously, I have made a bit of a debacle with the Top Gear <laughs> refresh. So, of course, I, I wouldn't have kept my job at the BBC, would I, if I'd not sort of fixed that. So, I was really lucky. I got to a project to make programming content for men, and it was before I got married, so it was great. I got, to, I got to go with a bunch of other producers to spend time with men for a whole afternoon and an evening. You are lovely. What I discovered was that men, they came back, we all came back together, uh, and we discovered that men did things like close their eyes for as long as possible on motorways when they're driving. I see a guilty, I thought, yes, I may well have done that. Or switch your, life, your lights off on the, in the dark when you're driving on country roads. Come on. Yeah. You see, I, I spotted, I, I, I've, got an, I've got a knack for it now. I can, spot, I can spot the ones that do that. So men were looking for thrills. And we came up with this whole idea that all our content for men would give them a roller coaster ride. And that was what led to this relaunch of, of Top Gear. Right. So thank God for that. It did really well, you know, you know the story. Um, now, that was 2000. I did a project, this food project, where we targeted men as well. And there, you guys are in a very different place. So really importantly for patterns, don't think that people stay in the same place, that their values stay in the same place. What we discovered, you can't really read that, I'm sorry because it's up there, but what we discovered was that men saw food as a, as a refuge. They have their little food sheds where they do their special type of chopping, their spices, etc. So actually what we realized was in 2016-17, what men wanted was to feel in control. They didn't want a roller coaster ride anymore. So things do change. The, the needs, um, the values of your people change. Now this is probably the most important bit, which is your internal people. How do you get them to change? How do you get them to adopt a new way of working or a new way of doing things? So the first thing, obviously, is who's going to do it? Who are you going to look for? Now, it sounds like an obvious question, because you think, well, of course, it's my team. But actually, it's not really, because it depends which team you go for and where you might want to outsource. If your values match the change you're trying to have happen, then it will happen. You, ha you have a resilience for it. So if those three match the change you want, it will happen. If they don't, it's less likely to, because change takes a lot of effort. And people will say no to you, because no one likes... Well, I like change, but in reality, you know, when something doesn't quite fit with the way we currently work, you tend to say no first. 
So you need to have those three values match your change. Now, really importantly, do they match your team or the group that you're trying to change? So think about the people you're trying to change. Do, those, do they have those values that match the change? So if you're trying to move people to digital and you want them to do bite-sized, not long scripts, not beautifully crafted, and they're perfectionists, that's hard because you're not matching their values. That is why what often happens is that companies, instead of doing in-house development, they bring in people from outside or they, or they buy a company outside that does something. They horizontally integrate. They'll buy someone from outside. So it's just asking that question. When I get pulled into a company to work on it, now the truth is you can, you can, you can lead people to change, you can. Because leadership is only 40 to 70% environment. It's the environment you set, that group. And we've heard today quite a lot about autonomy. Creative people like these three things. They like autonomy, they like mastery, and they like to have purpose in what they do. So those are the three things that drive creative people. Now, there's four stages to creative process. There are, there are different things you can do in those four stages. You can train people. That's what I've done for years. You can train in-house, you can. Um, but it's just being aware that people need support and training and coaching to be able to do that if the values do not match. Okay, the last one's quick, because I know we're all getting to the end of the day. So, so to, to drive change, you need to use value. That's really my key thing for people. The last one is purpose. Now, purpose is why change is successful. Now, what we know and I didn't know this at the time when I started to run the Creative Leadership Programme and the Creative Leadership events at the BBC, was that the brain has, is not left and right. That's a fallacy. They've now discovered there's three, there's three networks at play. There's the prefrontal cortex, which is the executive. There's the imagination bit. Ideas come from behind your right ear, believe it or not. Did you know that? So if you need an idea, you can tap it. And then there's a salience network at the back of the head. For ideas to happen, you need to switch off the logical. So you need to switch this bit off, and you need to turn this bit on at the back for the ideas to happen. So when, you, when we've heard today about people talking about you know, understanding what that, um, you know, what that channel's about, what that platform's about, understanding what my brief is, what I'm trying to achieve, that's what it's about. It's about it being simple enough that I can switch this bit of my brain off, and, and it's got to also be emotional enough to switch the back of the, of, the, of, of the brain on as well to make the ideas happen. So simple and emotional or relevant. And that's really your purpose. So winning events, winning, um, uh, winning shows. These are some examples that I've worked on. So um, I set up the vision for the um, Olympic Games. And it was very, very simple. We're going to record every sport from every location every day. That's it. Very simple, but really ambitious. And it was very relevant because it was, a, it was a crossover in time when we suddenly got smartphones. And we could watch content wherever we wanted. And we could look at stuff on any piece of glass we chose that we had in our hand. Um, so that was just a short clip of it, which I'm not going to show because we haven't got time. Uh, and I, I got a lovely nod. Yes, Linda, yeah. Just move on, move on. Um, winning shows. So what's the purpose behind Doctor Who? I, I'm often brought in when two teams won't work together. The production team and Worldwide didn't, didn't like each other very much. So I got brought in, and actually what we found was, in terms of purpose for Doctor Who, he looks like us. So he's an everyday hero. So when Worldwide was saying, please, can we have these fan events, production were like, no. But after realizing that's his unique selling point, it's his purpose. He is the every, he's got two hearts, but you can't tell. So you, fans can actually meet him. Perfect. What more can you ask for? Uh, strictly, or you call, if you've got Dancing with the Stars. So I work on that. Uh, you know, it's, it's no surprise. I was a dancer myself, so I absolutely love it. But for that, it's the fairy tale. Because the world is quite difficult right now, isn't it? Let's be honest. And it's the one place where you can go to as a family, and it's safe, and it's glamorous, and it's glitter, and it's, you know, it's all nice things. Um, so it's, you know, that is the core purpose, and they're very careful to stay true to that. Okay, 
So the questions are, why are you, why now? And what's your simple emotional purpose? Setting that up right at the start to, to be able to win. Um, just very quickly, the fangs, they are all have solid purpose at the base of them. And the last thing is the BBC, just to say these three Ps that I've talked you through, these three, these three Ps are not only ways to win at leading change, but they're also ways you might lose. So it's worth looking at your brands, looking at your, your channels, looking at what, what, you know, what you're doing, and sense checking, because the patterns that you've seen today, and we've all talked about, so Facebook, because most people are going to, for, for news, half of the population are using it now for news, What's that, what that's actually done is changed people's values, It's changed the, the next P along. So people, the BBC is all about being proud of being British. British content, British creativity, you know, that's why you pay your license fee. I have heard time and time again people saying that they're not proud of the BBC anymore because their values, their values, you know, Brexit has divided the UK, their values are not reflected on the BBC. So they think that the BBC doesn't value their beliefs and their views. That's the danger. So they're also very useful for sense checking. Are we on shaky ground now? And it worries me because obviously I love the BBC. I grew up there, so I'm bound to. So I'm going to finish off with a bright picture and say, I think we're brilliant. I think we've got great patterns. We've got great people. And we have great purpose. A lot of us public service, a lot of us being, being able to make local content, all the things you've heard about today, but, you know, with those three Ps, you can actually step into a whole new world. And, and I think you can be very successful. And I'll finish it there. Thank you very much. Thank you.